finally back in your head. You know, it's been a little while. I've been doing a lot of reaction videos, but um, this one is gonna be about a, it's a jail story. You know, again, this is never to glorify, it's always to uplift the youth and, you know, share my past experience and the things that I went through in order, you know, to change and, you know, become a different person in life. So make sure you stay tuned in, man. This uh, video is gonna be about um, one time when I was in, uh, <clears throat> You know, Rikers Island, the four building, C-74, back in 2007, adolescent days, you know, 16, 17, and 18 year olds. So, um, without further ado, I'm gonna jump right into it. So, uh, I was probably like 17 years old, you know, around that time, I think it was 2007, right? And, you know, I'm already on Rikers Island for um, probably like five, five and a half already, six months already. I mean, I'm fighting my case, which is a robbery case at the time. And, um, you know, me and my co D be going back and forth, you know, to court and shit to um, basically trying to, you know, get the outcome and um, get the best outcome, you know. Um, so we was going to court in Brooklyn and the Bronx, you know, because um, the crime happened. The crime that we did, it happened in the Bronx, but we ended up getting arrested in Brooklyn because... Uh, that's where my father lived at the time. And that's, you know, we was going over there to his house, East New York, you know, to lay low after we did what we did. So anyway, we got, you know, we on Rikers Island. We've been there for more than a few months. People know our names, people know us, you know, names is holding weight, ringing bells. You know what I'm saying? We running through the building, doing shit, you know, unfortunately, um, oppressing and, you know, robbing, taking people's shit, you know, running down on people, although we didn't even have to do that because we had family on the outside um, holding us down all the way to the max, you know what I'm saying? But um, like I said in previous videos, that's just the things that you have to get into if you don't want to become a victim yourself and you have to survive and learn how to, um, you know, you have to learn to tactics and shit in Rikers Island and even in prison up north in order to survive and not become a victim of the... Uh, the, the gang violence, the brutality, the extortion, the, the, the everything that goes on behind them walls that a lot of people do not know about, right? So, um, we on Rikers Island and um, this kid, he basically almost got killed for not being with it, basically. So, we in, I'm in five main house of pain, north side, right? Um, you know, the niggas that's running the crib, the two niggas at the time, I forget their names. Um, then you got the four niggas on the team and then you got a couple of niggas rocking, meaning that they doing, you know, whatever they want. They not with it. I'm saying they might not have a chair or whatever, but they doing whatever they want, using the phone, commissary, nobody touching them, taking their stuff. At that time, 2007, six and eight, you had chairs, you had plastic chairs. So the niggas would sit on stacks. And when you walk in the house and you see Whoever's sitting on stacks or sitting on a chair, you know they doing something in the crib or you know what I'm saying or part of the team or something. That's how you identify, you know what I'm saying, who's who and what's what was going on. So anyway, we in five main north side, House of Pain, right? Cause that's was that that was House of Pain back then. That was just one of them. So we in there, dude pulls up. There's about three of them. Three new dudes pull up. We all in the day room, you know, we chilling, mingling, doing whatever we're doing, watching TV shows on the TV, niggas is playing chess, checkers on the phone. You know how, jail, that's how jail is, you know what I'm saying? Right, cause I was at least. And um, so three new dudes pull up, you know, they come through the A and B gate. Anybody that ever been in Rikers Island know what the A and B gate is. So they, you know, once they come through the A and B gate, they can see right into the day room. So we see them as they come in and they stand in between the A and B gate, right? So. You know, niggas run, you know, approach the gate, yo, uh, uh, you know, acting like they crip. Saying what's cracking, what's cracking. Try to, you know what I'm saying, see if they crip. You know what I'm saying, get them to slip up when it's really a blood house. You know what I mean? So, no, they wasn't gang banging or none of that. Probably, matter of fact, probably one of them was gang banging with blood or something like that. You know, they checked them, G checked them, did all that, because that's jail politics shit, all that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So, the other two dudes was neutral. They wasn't nothing. They, I guess they was their first time ever coming to Rikers Island. They didn't know anything about Rikers Island. They came in the house. Boom. So, 
as they come in the house, you know, the CEO direct them to their cell, whatever what cell they're going to be living in or whatever for the time they're there. So they go in their cell, fix up their shit, whatever, come out. I, I, you know, there's already tension because there's new niggas in the crib, you know what I'm saying? So it's tension. Like, you can feel it. You can see it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know it. You know what I'm saying? Niggas don't know when it's going to go down. You know what I'm saying? Or how it's going to go down. But niggas know it's just going to go down. You know what I'm saying? So um, <clears throat> they end up asking the niggas... The other two niggas that came in that wasn't gangbanging, like, yo, what's good? They ran the program down. Yo, y'all with it? Uh, uh. They didn't know what that shit meant. So, you feel me? Like I said, it, was, it, it must have been their first time on Rikers Island. They didn't know what, what it means. They didn't know what the program was. They didn't know anything. You feel me? So, they was dumbfounded. Like, what is that? Like, so, just for them not knowing what it is, like, they didn't even get a chance to, to say they was with it or was not with it. Later on that day, I think it was during lunchtime. Yeah, it was during lunchtime. The food got served. You feel me? Child, on the child. Child, you know, everybody line up. They trade. Boom, boom, boom. Go back to the day room right there. Niggas eating down, sitting. Uh, uh. So then they sent it. The nigga that had the crib, they sent a day room dummy there to go pop pop it off on the nigga, right? So son sitting down with his back face facing the day room door. And he's watching the TV in front of him, you feel me? And he's eating his little sausage. So they had hot dog sausages looking things paused that day, right? Boom. So he eat his shit. He, he finished his lunch, whatever. Boom. He took his tray back to the pantry, slid it through the slot. Boom. He go back to the to the day room. He sit down on the iron horse with, you know, the iron dick, which is, that's that's what it was called back in my days, 2006, 7, 8. The, the iron horse was a picnic, a metal cold picnic bench in the day room. It was four of them or three of them sometimes. And if you sat on that, you was with it. It was soft, you was pussy. That's what they considered you, you know what I'm saying? So he went right back and sat down where he was sitting at when he ate, where, where he was eating at. So boom, nigga that ran the crib, sent the day room dummy at the nigga full, full force like a missile. And the nigga he sent was like a good 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, That's how big the adolescence was back in my day. You feel me? So he sent them, boom. Son just sidelined the nigga. Boom! Right off the bench. You feel me? Son flew off the bench, hit the floor. He tried to curl up. Niggas just start stomping his head in. Like, it just turned into a... a, a you just see about like 10 to 15 niggas whooping him out, stomping him out right there on the floor. The CO bitch was probably about 5'3", feel me? Some black regular hood bitch with a uniform. But she couldn't stop nothing, control nothing. She started spraying the mace everywhere. She pressed the PBA, that's the alarm, feel me? Turtle end up coming, feel me? The, the crazy shit about the story is that the bitch picked me out and said that I had something to do with it and I was involved with it. Word, Turtles came, punched us up a little bit, threw us in flexi cuffs, feel me? and took us down to intake for mad hours. They brought me back to the house after like four or five hours and shit. And I got a ticket and all that. And I ain't even have shit to do with it, feel me? So, you know what I'm saying? That's why I always tell these stories and try to get them out there to the youth and to the people that's, you know what I'm saying, out there, you know, wasting your life, man. Running the streets, giving it to the crime or giving it to the system. Y'all see what they doing, man. Like, they not playing. The DA of the Bronx, Darcel Clark, I love her. Like, you know what I'm saying? She's like a mother figure. And that's why I love her, because she cares about the community. She cares about the black community, the Spanish. She cares about everybody. You know what I'm saying? The Asian community, everybody. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I love her for that. You know what I'm saying? Like I said before in one of my other videos, she was my judge before. In one of my cases back in uh, 2011, I believe. And she tried to roof me, you know what I'm saying? And she, she opened my eyes up somewhat amongst other things, you know, family stuff and, you know, just me growing up and being a man and realizing that's not what I want for my life, jail, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, that's why I try to put these out there. I know it's been a little minute. I've been, you know, telling other <clears throat> stories of reactions that's going on in, the, uh, you know, the streets, the news and shit like that. But, you know, I'm about to be back on this uh, jail experience story shit, Rikers Island shit and up north prison stories. So this shit can reach the youth and y'all can um, get it together or forget it forever, man. Like I said, that's the model that we going by. Also, growth and development, man. growth and development, man. That's, that's what it's all about, man. You grow and you develop and you learn from shit and you move on, man. Try to 
do better and make a positive, you know, um, step in your life towards doing, you know, positive things. So you ain't got to go through the bullshit that I once went through. I'm saying, running through Rikers Island as a youth, I'm saying, gang banging, you know, thinking shit is cool, hurting people, I'm saying, getting hurt in the process, because that's what happens too, you could be tough and you still gonna get hurt, it don't matter, nobody's untouchable, so make sure y'all just get it together, man, like I said, I'm gonna be dropping a lot more videos like this, I got a lot of other stories, I'm saying, for y'all, and um, stay out the mix, man, it's getting hot out here, shit, people don't know how to act, man. Catch me on the next one, though, man. Stay tuned and be safe.